let's go over the resource options here one by one the first tab is general so I have only basic description the resource ID which I have previously identified before you can change it here if you want or you can also edit here the same also for description and employee ID if the labor works for your own company and what is his title the email address and office phone and you can keep it active or inactive for example if in vacation for example for the codes you can assign also codes for the resource maybe the still fixer you you have two groups in the project group a and group b for example two different areas in the project another also code might be useful to make a category if the labor works for you as a contractor or it works for a subcontractor so you can have this role is it subcontractors stuff or the company's stuff and to add you have to first before you assign the resource code you have to create a new one you go to enterprise resource codes click modify so this is a high level of the codes so let's say that employment type click close and I will keep adding sub levels of employment type so let's say that this is come like company resources or company stuff company labors and also is it subcontractor labors copy and paste and edit here and click closed so I can assign now the still fixer it's under my company labor for details you can also change the type you can change it here or from the drop down menu here the unit of measure it's only applies for materials not for labors square meter or ton it's only for materials the currency you can keep it the project currency or maybe you can have different currency if you want and over time I'll allow it so if you click on it you can edit here the overtime factor so is it 20% overtime so this will reflect into cost as well the profile the calendar the, the calendars we created in the project you remember we created contractors calendar so you can change the calendar if you want and it will reflect on the resources usage profile so the availability and unavailability based on the resource calendar as well so i would keep it the same like the contractors calendar and minimize the resource calendar so always stick with the activities calendar and the default units per time so 10 units per time is 10 hours per day so this is what it means so 10 per day so unit here for resources is is an hour in this in this window because unit will mean something else later when we explain in future videos but in the definition or creation of resources 10 is 10 hours per day and also you always keep them open here so auto compute actuals calculate courses from units so you do not have to interfere update anything manually everything will be updated automatically when we deal with the earned value when we give percentages to activities so everything will be auto computed so you do not manually update anything so always leave these two options open units and the prices so this is a maximum units per time we have here the effective date and maximum units per time and the price per unit so maximum units per time is eight per day so how many hours maximum this resource can be deployed regardless how many labors are working so let's say that i will put 50 so this resource can have a max can work a maximum 50 hours per day but here the default unit per time is 10 so it means that i can have maximum five labors to work for 50 hours per day so each labor is working 10 hours per day and i have five labors so overall i have maximum units 
50 hours per day or five labors per day. So this is the maximum units per time. The price per unit, so how much you're gonna pay him per hour. So this is the hour rate. And I would keep it zero because if you wanna do cost management in Promovera, then you have to insert all the cost related inputs and including the hour price. But if you're managing contract, like the schedule you are submitting to the client, so of course you will not need to put this kind of information. You keep it zero and you create another resource called the cost to manage the cash flow of the contract, like the payments and the cash in, cash out for the contract. But for cost management purposes, the internal cost management, you can use the price per unit. So it depends on your purpose, but most practitioners now use Promovera as a tool to manage projects and submit reporting to the client, not internal project management tool. You go to rule and here you can assign the rule. For example, this is the rule. For example, this resource is the uh, supervisor or shift to supervisor or a qualified labor or you know just a rule in the project if you want to add labors so you can go to enterprises rules and define labors first you can add the rule name here and you can assign to it notes you can modify and make notes for example this is still fixer it belongs to edit steel company agreement reference xyz so just some notes for this resource for user defined fields we will talk about it in separate video in this course so this is what you need to know right now about resources creation and resources options in the next lecture we will talk about duration types